Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. We are ready for this once in a lifetime event, Solar Eclipse 2024. We have crews all over South Texas standing by to bring you the sights and sounds. Adam Kasky, Justin Horn, both in Fredericksburg, one of the prime spots in the path of this eclipse totality. We're going to bring be checking in with Mia Montgomery and Sarah Spivey as well. They're going to be watching history along with some youngsters at Owie Elementary. Steve Priester and Jen Strusky are watching from Bernie and Mike Osterhage and Fiona Gorstiza will be joining us with another perspective from The Rock at La Quintera. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Ursula Perry, and this is the moment, the moment we've been waiting for for decades. It is time for a total solar eclipse here in Texas. And I'm David Sears, and we're doing a, something a little bit different on KSAT 12 News at noon. We're coming to you live from the roof here at KSAT 12 because <laughs> we do not want to miss a moment of this historic event because just in a few moments, the clouds in the sky is going to turn surreal. That's right. The moon is going to pass in front of the sun. It's going to block it out totally or partially, depending on where you are and what the cloud cover is looking at. As we watch these clouds, it could happen second to second. We may be able to see it. We may not. We may be seeing a partial amount of cloud cover. We just don't know. But what we do know is that we have staff all over South Texas ready to bring it to you live. And everybody is pumped up for this magical moment. Our Justin Horn and Adam Kasky have the prime spot for totality. They are in Fredericksburg and now joining us live. Gentlemen. The partial eclipse will start. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are playing games. I see a lot of Uno going on. That's what you gotta do. You do. A lot of Uno going yeah. on. A little bit of Monopoly down that way. And the sun yes. just popped out. We've been really scrutinizing the visible satellite picture to see what the clouds are going to look like. It's it's going to be hit or miss. It just is. Because we see this type of pattern all the time. Right. You wake up, low morning clouds, then it clears out from anywhere from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Right. Right. But we also have a few other added factors in this weather pattern. So we're starting to clear out a little bit right now. There's a gap in the in the low stratus and they, they broke up a little bit earlier, too. Right. Uh, we just hope this gap can hold long enough yeah. for totality. That's right. going to be a close one. And I'm not as confident right now in that. But sure. It's, it's kind of like a cycle, though, you know, when you get, you get some warming, it helps to kind of break up the clouds. So we're, the, we're yeah, open. the warming breaks up the low morning overcast, but then it creates it's new puffy cumulus right. clouds, which then once we get the umbra, the shadow starting, it's going to be less sun, less energy from the sun to create the thermals to maintain these patchy cumulus clouds, these puffy ones. So yeah. ideally, and in total eclipses of the past, right? Eclipses, eclipsi? Uh, let's go with eclipses. <laughs> eclipses. 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 That's it. Eclipses of the past. <laughs> um, they're, they're, you know, especially in Path of Totality, there yeah. is a dissipation yeah. of the puffy cumulus clouds that rely on that thermal energy from and the sun. We got a long totality here. We do. We have uh, four minutes and 24 seconds. Is Which right? is one of the longest totalities we've seen in a long, long time with an eclipse. Yeah. And the totality actually, even in the, the dead center line, does get a little bit shorter as you head farther to the northeast along the yeah. path. So we are, it starts in Mexico and right. then it hits us. And, you know, the shadow is traveling over 1600 miles per hour it's wild. on the ground. Wild. I mean, just, I can't wait to see satellite imagery and just other views, even from airplanes of just. I can't wait to see everyone's reaction when it's it happens. It's going to be great. And yes. even if the clouds are overhead, it's going to turn like it's midnight out here. Yeah. Now, if it's sunny like this and then it hits, it's going to be like dusk or dawn. Right. But if it's cloudy, it'll be just like just like that. It's like a light switch going off. Yeah. Actually, hey, sir, would you mind coming over here? Yeah. We have a veteran yes. of eclipses. Yes. Come on over. So tell us here. your name real quick. Win Ray. Okay, and where are you from? California. California. But don't hold that against me. Both my family is from Texas. No, we, we wouldn't. Love you. We wouldn't do that. Uh, okay, so you are an eclipse expert. That's what I'm going to say. Because how many eclipses have you seen? I've seen seven. Wow. When was your first, and where? It was in the middle of the Black Sea with that woman who would then be my wife later on in 1999. That's awesome. And uh, we've been seeing, every, she saw one before me and every other eclipse we've seen together. And tell us your name. Yeah. Norma Wattenpa. Okay, okay, so tell me, you met, you got married, then you went to the first eclipse. No, we went to the no. first eclipse before we got married. 
Okay, that's how y'all met. Is that the way it's well, kind of more or less? We met okay. online, but we learned quickly that we both intended to see that eclipse in Romania. Yeah. And we ended up going together. And that was a good test of the relationship, right? Sure was. <laughs> we just met. Let's go to Romania and watch an eclipse. <laughs> All right. And how many what years later? What could go wrong, you know? <laughs> and how many years later now? 25. Oh, congratulations. congratulations. Story. That's awesome. What has been your favorite e total e solar eclipse so far? Where and when? The, for our honeymoon, we went and saw the, a hybrid eclipse, which starts out annular and then becomes full as the distance oh, between the Earth and the yeah. Sun, the Earth and the Moon changes. And that was very interesting. Middle Pacific, places you'd never go. We were at Pitcairn Island, Tahiti, Ma, uh, Easter, Easter Island, Island. Yeah. Machu Picchu. But yeah, it was just amazing. And I tried something I hadn't done before, which is I put an eye patch on at first contact. What happens is it darkens one eye. All right, we're going to be leaving these guys in Fredericksburg because we're doing this a little bit differently today. We've got all of our shots ready to go, and we're just going to join in wherever so, they are. Right now, we're going to Bernie. That's where Steve Spreester is interviewing somebody along with Jim Strusky. So let's just listen in and see what they're talking about. But, uh, but yeah, we still have plenty of space, lots of food, too. Right, from a personal perspective, what are you expecting when the eclipse happens? I think I just want to see the darkness in the middle of the day and maybe like a 10 degree drop in temperature because yeah, it is exciting. It feels good, but it's still a little humid and running around. I'm sweating a little bit, you know? <laughs> yeah, you got a nice breeze out here. I will say that. Yeah, for sure. That light switch will just turn. Nature's light switch, right? right there you go. Right. Yeah. So exciting. It would be cool. I've heard that like crickets come out or maybe, you know, like nighttime bugs. They, they think it's nighttime. So you might hear some stuff that you don't normally hear during the day. That'll be cool. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd will be awesome. Will we see a tear come down from you? I mean, maybe, but I don't know. Uh, I've heard some people, like, they get struck, you know? They don't know what to do. We'll see what happens, right? Yeah, sure. Thank you so much for having us. Right, thank yeah, for thank you for the out. hospitality. I really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, it's been great. Dog and Pony Grill out here. We're going to be live here until 2 o'clock. We're going to take in totality, all that great stuff. And uh, I'm struck by... I'm seeing families or groups of people that all have matching Eclipse yes. t-shirts on. Did you see that earlier? Yeah, so many cool t-shirts. I mean, I know a lot of boutiques made some, and I think people just made them on their own. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's something that doesn't happen very often, so have a have a cool souvenir, you know? Yeah. Right. And let's Appreciate look at your time. Your, I know let's you look at your shirt real quick, because yeah. they can get this one if they come out here. There's still some available to purchase, right? Yep. Yeah, for sure. We still have plenty of available. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Joey. Thank you. All right, man. Thank Take you. care. All right. And, and I was box. talking about the merchandising and earlier. We are going There's to also, check in some traffic. Uh, that's right. RJ is standing by. I know you've seen the signs all over the highways. Uh, Trans guide warning people don't stop. Uh, pull over safely. Um, we're expecting a bit of a mess on the roads right now, RJ, aren't we? Yeah, it's gotten very busy out there, especially in parts headed out northwest and, of course, the far west side as you people head out to Castroville, sorry, the Uvalde area. So let's give you a quick look here at our Transguide traffic cameras. And this is a spot here, I-10, Bernie, this is, you see, this is stop-and-go traffic in this area. Of course, Texas had been saying uh, in preparation of this that uh, be prepared to make sudden stops. Of course, they do not want anyone to pull over off of to the shoulders, not want anyone to pull over to the Medians. Let's show you the map here and show you exactly what's going on. Four different spots, uh, basically, are what we're indicating right now that we're seeing some pretty good uh, delays in the area. Let's start here. Of course, this is our biggest spot here. Most people are headed out to the Bernie area. We're looking at uh, I-10 Bernie West uh, to uh, Leon Springs here. So we're getting traffic through here at about 16 miles per hour, 14 miles once you get into the city of Bernie. That camera that we just saw is right before you get into uh, Bernie city limits. Obviously very, uh, very busy there in that area. We also have uh, busy traffic here. Highway 16 at Highway 46 is for all of our folks that headed out to the Bandera area that are going out to uh, see the eclipse out there. And we're gonna go out to, this is the spot in between uh, 281 and uh, I-10. This is going to be Highway 46 and FM 3351, and we're getting traffic there about 12 miles per hour. Now, unfortunately, some of these locations are for, so far out that we don't have cameras in that area, but again, we will continue to keep you updated on the situation here. Headed out to Castroville, Highway 90, FM 471. We're seeing a buildup of traffic in those directions there as people make their way out. Again, as we mentioned, do not go over to the shoulder. Please do not drive with your eclipse glasses on. It is okay to turn on your headlights during the, that time of totality or during the eclipse, uh, but again, just make sure that you guys are safe on the roads and be prepared for sudden stops. David, Ursula, back to you guys. All right, RJ, once again, be careful on the roads. And once again, we're doing this a little bit different today. As you can see, all our crews are in these monitors right here. And right now, 
We are headed to the rock at La Cantera. Yeah, it looks like it's a little cloudy out there. They're going to talk a little bit about why NASA is watching this very carefully. Mike and they Fiona. are still working on, and it's going to be about, what, maybe another decade before it actually gets completed, okay? And we've got one of the folks from it here with us today. This is Justine. Is it Shane? Shane. All right. Okay, with NSF Nor Lab, and you are an education specialist. Tell us about the big telescope. Yes. Okay, so this is the U.S. Extremely Large Telescope Program. It is a joint endeavor of NSF Noir Lab, so who I work for. This is the U.S. Center for Optical Nighttime Astronomy, and then it's also partnering with the Giant Magellan Telescope and the 30-meter telescope. So you have one telescope in the northern hemisphere and one in the southern hemisphere, so you get this unique all-sky access, which is going to enable us to answer some of the biggest questions in astronomy. They will have a level of sensitivity and precision that has never been seen before. And, and give us a perspective of just how much bigger or how much better I mean it is yeah exactly so these are 30 meter telescopes so you can picture three school buses in a row and that's how big they are so the giant Magellan telescope is made up of seven 8.4 meter mirrors and then the 30 meter telescope which is 30 meters in diameter <laughs> is made up of 492 1.4 meter mirrors and besides what the telescope can do, getting all of those little mirrors all lined up is fascinating in itself how you do that. Yeah, that takes um, a lot of work to do, and I'm probably not the best person to answer that question. You measure off a star. Oh, yeah. yeah. So It's not so, somebody standing there with a, with a tape measure. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, so they use stars, some natural stars and some false stars using a laser to compensate for the atmosphere. So we want to, we are ground-based telescopes, so we have to see through this atmosphere. And so to do that, they have all these instruments, it's called adaptive optics, and they're able to compensate for the distortion of Earth's atmosphere by using natural stars and the laser guide stars. Wow. Yeah, All right. <laughs> the kids running around yeah. here, you were that age not too long ago. Yes. What sparked your interest in this and what do you hope to, that these kids are going to get out of it? So I was actually a science teacher for about 10 years. So I am in my... Okay, that conversation continues and I think that's what we're going to find out a lot today is there's a lot of scientists that have, consent, have come to San Antonio and come to South Texas in the Hill Country to see this eclipse because this is a once in a lifetime deal. We know there are a lot of experiments going on and of course a lot of kids are out enjoying this one in a lifetime. And if you are headed to one of these locations, we've got things you can tell. It's, there's different weather considerations at each one of these locations. A little bit overcast here, very overcast here at The Rock, uh, overcast at Owie Elementary. And uh, over here in Fredericksburg, they actually have breaks of sun, so they may be lucking out better than all of us. You can even see a little shadow from just Little shadows, which is what we're looking for. So coming up next, we are going to give you a complete weather forecast because there is some severe weather in our forecast and we're going to check in with the kids yeah we're going to walk over to the octamon right now and show you that there's mia montgomery interviewing our own tiffany our, they don't really know and too many look here over here so mazatlan know. mexico is already seeing a partial eclipse that's headed our way this is happening right now and we're going to bring it to you live right here on ksat 12 we'll be right back
And welcome back to our special KSAT 12 coverage of Eclipse 2024. You can see right there a partial solar eclipse happening right now in Mazatlan, Mexico. When we left, it was not quite like this, but that sun is starting to get covered up down there. We expect that here. It is in moving. The next few minutes, actually. Yeah, and we're going to start um, seeing some of this after one o'clock today. In the meantime, people are getting in position uh, and learning more about the eclipse. We've even got yeah. our famous KSAT Mike. He's got his own eclipse glasses, <laughs> along with Sarah Spivey and Mia Montgomery. It's great to see you guys. They're going to be experiencing the eclipse right now. It's pretty cloudy over San Antonio, but I do want to show off our awesome mascot, Mike. Mike, how you feeling today, bud? Woo! Awesome. Okay. Mike has got an exact replica of our solar eclipse glasses. Go ahead and turn to the right, Mike. Look at how accurate this is. One of our co-worker, Tony, his wife, made these, handmade these solar eclipse glasses. Now, Mike, if you want to look at the camera here, they're not necessarily super uh, efficient for the solar eclipse, so we won't have Mike look exactly at the solar eclipse, but it's still pretty cool. He so. is being such a good sport. I will say, so the second Maybe we got here earlier today, some of the kids were already out here at recess. Take a look behind us, okay? So this is what the setup's going to be. Again, we are at Owie Elementary on the northwest side in Leon Springs. They're going to bring all of their students out here to 600. this field. Over 600 students. Some of their parents are already starting to usher in as well. So in a little bit, they're going to be bringing their students out here with their glasses. They've got glasses for all of their kids too, which is super, super important. And together, we are all going to experience this amazing event. I can't tell you how excited it we are. It is going to be so much fun, even though it is cloudy. Okay, so first what I want to do, Mia, yeah. I want to talk a little bit about the weather. If you look at the satellite image right now, you can clearly see that a layer of stratus clouds has moved into our viewing area. Earlier we had peaks of sunshine. The stratus clouds have moved in. Now we have seen some peaks even within the stratus, but I think Mia, within the next hour, it's going to be in the clouds. Yeah, which of course was something that and it is so important even with we the cloud cover that we're audio seeing right now with Sarah with and Mia's mic um, I can still hear him talking yeah so I seem to be going in and out still going to get let's go back to them if we can Experience. It is going to be a cool experience. Not only will it get dark, we'll see a temperature drop. Get a little cooler. And the birds will start to be like, whoa, what's <laughs> going on? And the lights like in the neighborhood should yeah. automatically turn on. So it's still going to be a cool experience. I can only anticipate how the kids are going to react. Mike. It's going to be. <laughs> Here. So Tiffany Huertas is out here as well. Tiff, come say come hi. on, Tiff. Come on over here. Come I'm over here. Not ready for this. Here, yeah. let me. Let me. <laughs> she said she was not ready and she looks glad. So. so, so what are you going to be doing out here with us today? Uh, talking to the families. Um, this is a perfect event for educational purposes. They're going to be talking all things science. I know. It's just going to be like you said, very shocking experience for some of the kids right the, yeah. the reaction is going to be great i'm going to be talking to the kids i'm going to be talking to the families and maybe some people have been chasing this for many years so i'm excited to hear their stories and experiences and we're ready yeah you got the fit we've pack, got the so. fanny pack uh, I'm, are you guys parents of owie yeah. kids would you like to talk Come on, on camera yeah. all right we're going to check back with them in just a little bit meantime we're moving on to bernie I know we've got the cloud cover right now, but we were able to look in there earlier and the sun looked really awesome to be able to look through that and see what they see. You're talking about $15,000 telescope over there. Did we get somebody to come over? Okay. I've got a group. I've got there a group to go. come over. Oh, oh look, at, look at the dog. Did you get the dog here? This is Rookie. Rookie's ready. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Rookie's ready. <laughs> By the way, we've only we've been here since nine o'clock, and this is by far the top dog at the Dog and Pony Grill. I got to tell you that right so now, cute. the top dog right there. Love Come on it, in, guys. love Come it. On Come on in, in guys. 
All right. Hi, what's I'm going to have you introduce yourself. Helena. Mm-hmm. Hi, what's your name? Alex. Hi, I'm Mariana. Okay, where are you guys from? We're from San Antonio. Yes. Okay. <laughs> what brought you out here today? Well, this is the path of totality, or near the path of totality. So we wanted to come here, spend time with family, eat some good food. <laughs> so I, we picked this place. <laughs> are you excited? Tell me how excited you are. Um, I'm pretty excited. <laughs> I can see a little bit of the solar eclipse. Yeah, and, and I know we've got some cloud cover, mm -hmm. but are you guys hopeful? I'm trying to send yeah, the good vibes here. We're hoping oh, yeah, cool. yeah, yes. definitely. <laughs> this is a once in a lifetime thing. I mean, well, I mean, seven years ago we had it, but I mean, who knows how long we're going to be able to see it now. Yeah. So, yeah, we're excited. Mm -hmm. What do you think? What do you think your emotions are going to be when, even if the lights go off? I mean, if the whole thing happens, what do you think your emotions are going to be when totality happens? Oh my gosh, it's going to be. I haven't. I honestly have not. This is my first eclipse, so it's going to be like very, just I guess life changing. I would say, <laughs> yeah. So it's going to be. Cool. I mean, that's what people yeah. say. I've I've never experienced one yeah, either, and they say they they found themselves getting emotional yeah. over the whole thing. Yeah, I I I mean, just. From 2017 being in total darkness, it's it's kind of it has like a weird Ari feeling to it, you know what I mean? And it kind of puts life into perspective, you know, right. for, for most people, yeah. you know what I mean? Because most people rely on the sun for a lot of things. Mm -hmm. But when the sun goes out, it's like, oh man. You start hearing it, the crickets yeah. and the animals. And, That's what yeah. I'm looking forward to, yeah. right? Are you going to listen for the bugs and yeah. see what, if they start acting different? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you guys yeah. get to experience this together. Yeah, the, the family. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is my niece. Yeah. So my wife's We're down excited. there, brother in law, Kunyao. Yeah. They're all down there and stuff. Yeah. So they're down there, and you guys are the one who's to get on camera. So, I, you know. This is crazy. Yeah. This is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I, I had actually been preparing this for a while. I requested off from work for a while. In, in January, I was like, that's it. I'm taking April 8th off. I'm not coming in. All right. Once again, you're watching Steve Spreester. I'm blessed to be here with family and stuff. and. If you're just joining us, I want to explain to you that we're not cutting off Steve. We're not cutting off the interviews of any of our reporters or any of the people that they're, they're actually talking to. You can see our drone shot right there as well. That's the lower left-hand corner of your screen, and that's the Mazatlan partial eclipse going on right now. So that's what we're going to see in a few minutes. But if you come back here, you can see we've got four different crews all over South Texas. They are live streaming right now. So if you cool. want to join yeah. one it's of their live streams, it's going to be a great experience. And how you awesome can. Is you guys are out and you can watch experience. each individual like, one at a time, or you can just stick with us and we'll be going in and out all afternoon. We have a QR code comes up. that uh, you can scan. There's the QR code. And that will take you to this menu of live crews. You scan the code and you get to watch who Whoever you want to watch or you can just stay right here on KSAT 12 because we're going to bring it all to you live as it happens. We'll be right back.
a we I don't feel that smart today. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean, what's going on on the screen up there, and to have NASA actually working with the kids out here right now about what's actually happening up in the heavens uh, is really incredible. And of course, can't say enough thanks to the Spurs, to Frost Bank, to UTSA, uh, to my colleague, Councilwoman Adriana Rocha Garcia, who has really uh, conceived this idea of making it a STEM playground for kids. Uh, it's really a wonderful opportunity, it's slow to show collaboration in our community as well. You know, you think back to the early days of like the manned space missions, and at Brooks Air Force Base, they did a lot of the, the physiological testing for the astronauts there. Now we have Southwest Research. Maybe yeah. something else can come along. Because Southwest Research obviously sends up you know, missions into space all the time. Yeah. What else can we do here? Well, Southwest Research is uh, a very underrated aspect of space exploration and the, and the satellites that are being launched every single week in this world are a lot to do with the research that's happening at Southwest Research and the fact that they plug in globally with a lot of different entities that are, are working on making this safe. So. Uh, the, the, the story here for young people pursuing a career is also, you don't have to leave San Antonio, yeah, really, to right be here. a leader in uh, the space industry. Of course, you know what's going on in South Texas with SpaceX, privatization, commercialization of space travel, uh, space exploration. Uh, there's incredible need for policy making with regard to the number of satellites that are now up there and are... are ability to keep it safe and, and habitable uh, in the future. So uh, the, it's really limitless in terms of where this can lead uh, for young people who are out here today. Yeah, between San Antonio and Houston, it's really, pardon the pun, like the hub, right? Well, and also, what a great way to showcase The Rock, uh, this oh, yeah. first human performance institute and training facility. Yeah. This is really meant to be a public place of convening. You see that jumbo tower in the background? Tell me there's not a better place to watch a road game for the San Antonio Spurs. I, I can envision many, many celebrations in the years to come out here. Oh, and I was, you know, I was talking to some folks and they said, oh, you're going to be at the Rocket La Quintero. I haven't even been there yet. Check it out for me. Well, we are. We are right now. So there you go. As you were talking, I don't know if you heard, but I, was, I had one ear back there and they're talking about, so every star gets explodes and becomes a supernova. And I'm looking back and how many kids are sitting there and just, just wrapped with attention. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and and to think, this is they're not in class right now. Right. They're actually in outdoor class, but, they're uh, learning. but they are absolutely absorbing yeah. this. This is this is going to be something they remember for the rest of their lives. Yeah. For sure, for sure. Get rid of these darn clouds. <laughs> well, I'm, okay, so I'm a afraid. meteorologist. You're a mayor. Come on. Well, I, I, I believe in the power of prayer. <laughs> and, and so I have been praying very hard that uh, the experience is, is magnificent. Um, you know, maybe we could get a break in the clouds. Uh, but even still, uh, the what's going to happen here in terms of the darkness? And, yeah. I mean, you've been saying it all week, Mike. It's going to be spiritual. Yeah. experience. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, and that's why people chase them all over the world, you know, is for that experience, you know? Well, well back in October, I was out in Uvalde, and, you know, at the last minute, the clouds parted and looking up there, and like you said, and I, I say that to people, and I said, not to sound, you know, too over the top, but yes, it was almost like a religious experience looking at that. It's like, that's, you know, way beyond what we have any power over, and, and when the heavens come together like that, it's always oh, amazing. How insignificant our worries and cares are when you think about the fact that the moon is literally going to trend, uh, pass in front of the sun and block out all the light on Earth for a moment in time, and you know that's that's something that that just uh, we have, like you said, we have nothing to do with it. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. makes you feel very. Insignificant. All right, once again, that is Mike Ozdehage and folks from SA Live and the Mayor, and we are keeping an eye on all these different locations at once. You can choose your view, so to speak. Every one of these live streams is continuing on uninterrupted by us or anything else. Meantime, we are keeping an eye on the eclipse yeah, as it's is, happening. Uh, we now have a shot from Texas. This is what Mike and Fiona were talking about. It's getting closer, it's getting closer. That spiritual feeling coming up as the mayor put it.
about to be on TV for those streaming. <laughs> Welcome back to our live coverage of yes, our total are. eclipse. We're, you know, we've got bikes up all over the place, all over Texas, but we want to show you this. It's a, it's silent. What this is is it's a live shot. It's coming in from Junction, Texas. As you can see, it is now showing the beginning of the eclipse. There's the moon there in the corner, and this is the sun. And they keep going in between a zoom in and a zoom out. But in any event. It's beginning to happen right here in Texas. We are getting closer, and that means the kids at an Owie Elementary are going to get really exciting. Our own, well, y'all act like kids sometimes. You're having way too much fun. And I know we did this earlier, Sarah. We did this at the Science with Sarah. We showed them how to make glass. If they couldn't get glasses, we showed them how to watch the eclipse with just a box of cereal. How great is that? Yeah, just a <laughs> box of cereal, David. <laughs> In fact, Mia's already done half of the project. For those who have been streaming with us on Alley, you know what we're talking about. Yeah, so I can run you through the quick notes version of what we've done so far. By the way, this is my first pinhole projector that I've ever and made. And this actually does work when there's clouds outside. It's actually pretty like cool. Like your, your glasses don't work as well when there's clouds, but these do. So what I've done, so I've taken a cereal box, okay? And the first thing that we did is we took a regular sheet of paper, a white sheet of paper, and we outlined the bottom of this box. We cut it out. We put it inside the pinhole projector. We taped it down to the very, very bottom. Then we just finished on our live stream. We just finished cutting off the little wings on the sides of the box. And then we just left a little middle piece here and we taped that together. So Sarah is now gonna show yes. me the next step. So you have that piece of aluminum foil. You're gonna cover one side and tape it down. So if you wanted to do that Does it tape, matter which side? It doesn't, but I think it'll probably be good to do it on the bigger side. Does today. it matter if it's the shiny or the dull part of the foil? Nope, it doesn't. Good question. <laughs> All right, so let's do it. So we'll just put it together right there. And let me grab a couple of pieces of tape here too. Man, this is really a hands-on experiment, isn't it? It is, it is. I'll hold this down thank for you, you Mia. Thank you. Teamwork makes the dream work. It certainly does. So I'll do that piece right there. Let me get another piece right here. Tape it to the box, there you go. Right there, all right. Let me do one more on the bottom and then we'll be, I think, set. And then, and this then. part is important. We've got a pin. This is the part of the pinhole projector, okay? So you're just gonna bop. Okay, so it's a tiny little pinhole and this will focus the light. And what? how you use this, Mia, you might not be able to see too much because it's not. a little cloudy right now. You gotta have your back, back to it, to right? Back to the sun. Okay. And so the sunlight filters in here, gotcha. and then you can see it projected onto the back. And again, this typically works better with cloud cover than it does than your glasses do. I just want to show everybody. Do you guys see the parents that are lining up here to be with their kids? Take a look at this. Impressive. Let wow. Me see. Hey, y'all say hi. You're on Kesa. Hi, guys. <laughs> this line has gotten dramatically long in the past 10 minutes. Everybody is now showing up. So again, if you missed it, we're at Owie Elementary and they are going to bring the entire student body, which 600 is 600 kids. Students. Print out here to enjoy the eclipse. And again, a reminder, even if we don't get a break in the clouds, it is still going to be a very cool experience because it's going to get totally dark. Uh, the birds are going to come out. In fact, with this overcast skies, it's going to be like midnight. It's going to be really, really dark and really, really cool, which is going to be fun for all the kids. I think that's something that we're most excited about is just to see like their genuine reaction. Absolutely. So stick around for that. Back to you, David and Ursula. Thank you so much, guys. Very interesting. And you know, I, I gotta say, I really love the idea that it's a family event. This is one yep. of those moments when we are all coming together with a similar goal. And if you don't have time or you don't have the glasses, you do have time to make that box. Yeah. It's just a box. They, they have you got about get yeah, 25 minutes to do that. So you can, you can empty some cereal and be able to see the eclipse coming up. All right, RJ <laughs> standing by live because it looks like the traffic has lightened up quite a bit in that stretch that was wall to wall just a few minutes ago. Yeah, guys, and we were saying this. I mean, if uh, if you're not at your location right now, then uh, probably good luck getting out there. But things looking pretty good out there. You know what? I even uh, I brought out the uh, the Wemby candle. This candle, this candle, excuse me, <laughs> worked its magic.
magic for us. So we still have some time here, uh, about uh, 30 minutes or so. So hopefully when we could help the, uh, the skies kind of clear out just a little bit here. We are seeing just a little bit of uh, delays here. We mentioned uh, Bernie area to Leon Springs. That was very busy earlier, but you could see that traffic is now moving pretty well throughout the city of Bernie and even south of that. And we still have Highway 16, Highway 46, still causing a little bit of delays here because of the traffic headed out to Bandera. And one more here, Highway 46, FM 3351. We do see that we have a little bit of slowdown in this area. This is right in between uh, 281 and I-10 out on the far north to northwest side. But uh, Highway 90 is looking pretty good right now. And again, things look like they are definitely clearing out in, uh, in the Bernie area right now as people get up there. So here we go. Work your magic, uh, Victor Wembanyama. We're going to need it, but it's going to be a lot of fun for all the folks out there. Guys, back to y'all. Is it, is it lit up? <laughs> it's not. No, we better I like that. It was, a you know, it had some policy. incest on there. Yeah, let's just. Yeah. <laughs> trying to get in trouble. Okay. Well, hey, it's it gets, a thought that counts, <laughs> yeah, RJ. Yeah, if it gets yeah. the skies clear, mm -hmm. well, you know. Well, and we'll I will say this. <laughs> the, the skies from the shot behind you, RJ, it is looking brighter and brighter yeah. uh, as yeah. we head west. We just need a little bit more of that brightness to follow us into yeah. San Antonio. We still have time. Yeah. All Keeping right. our fingers crossed, guys. Just a reminder on KSET.com, you can follow each of our live crews. All you have to do is scan that code and pick your view. is wider this time around since the moon is once again our total eclipse coverage of eclipse 24 continues live here on ksat 12 we've got crews all over south texas we've got one crew that's trying to get their stuff maybe the eclipse is doing that i don't know well you know, we, we were worried on. about technolo technical logical issues because so many people are gathering in these places and we're using cellular technology for some of these shots so we were worried something like that might happen but as you can see adam cassie's got his eclipse candle burning he's burning that so he can get some it's working sunshine they so got let's, sunshine uh, yeah so let's head out on and listen to what's going on oh he's got it going on now oh that's nice she took their most popular scent and slapped a sticker on it hey it works I say what we they it. did was they captured some of the air from 2017 and the emotion 
and the scent of the air and infused it into this right here. I like it. That's where this came from, really. Yes. And this has given us our good juju today. Good juju. Good juju. A lot of pillows out here, which is cool. A lot of people have pillows and yeah. laying back, just kind of slumbering, taking it in, watching it as it slowly well, progresses. Well, since, since it started, Adam, we've seen it kind of get a little quieter out here. People are just soaking it in, it looks like, and yeah. that's that's what you hope for. There's still plenty of kids playing out over, out over on the play set, but uh, there's also a lot of people just soaking it in. We should walk on over there on along the sidewalk in a little bit. Yeah. Let's do it. When, do you, uh, when are you going to do your thermometer, Adam? So we, we got to be ready before totality. Right. You know, probably five, ten minutes before get in place and... Okay. Oh, I hear a drone. From the lab to the outdoors and even to outer space, researchers across the nation and right here in the Alamo City are using the total eclipse as a rare opportunity to conduct research. No matter what part of the astro field you're in, it's a big a conglomerate, a big gathering of the science community. Finus Stribling is a research assistant at UTSA who is currently studying the life cycle of a star in Stardust. His studies use light from the sun on a day-to-day -day basis to figure out what's happening within those stars. And it's just one example of the many research opportunities the Stardust Group at UTSA is conducting during the eclipse. They're doing a lot of uh, things with insects and how insects interact. And we're doing a lot of things for the, uh, the visually impaired community and how we're using like, textiles so they can feel what's going on even though they can't see and things like that. Across town at the San Antonio Zoo, zookeepers and researchers like Dr. Charles Ritzler will be keeping a close eye on how certain animal species respond to the eclipse. Because so little is known about how animals react to eclipses housed here in zoos. Ritzler says there was one previous study done during the 2017 solar eclipse when the path of totality crossed over the Riverbank Zoo in Columbia, South Carolina. Their findings? That animals started to prepare for their end of day activities. Gorillas were seen walking closer to their sort of indoor keeper areas. Elephants were seen getting less active. So that was our, our hypothesis here at the zoo. This is the home of the flamingos. Around 1.30 p.m. on April 8th, zookeepers and researchers like Charles are going to be monitoring their behavior to see if they respond to the dimming sky. And while that's just a taste of the research being conducted locally, the opportunities continue in an even bigger way on a national scale. Enter NASA. So back in 2017, the sun was in a solar minimum, so it was not as active. But right now we're in a solar maximum. That solar maximum is one of the reasons why this year's total eclipse is different from the one seven years ago. NASA chose a handful of experiments to conduct during this year's eclipse, from getting clearer pictures of the sun's corona to figuring out if radio or GPS signals could be affected. Their findings may be used in future NASA missions and space exploration. And with the next total eclipse not taking place until 2044 in the United States, it's a rare opportunity that connects researchers from all over the nation to those right here in San Antonio. Mia Montgomery, KSAT 12 News. It's science. So cool, and it's happening right now. Uh, those flamingos, by the way, you can see them, I believe, on ZooCam if yeah. you want to watch them during the eclipse as well. Just a reminder, on KSAT.com, you can... Have your choice of anything you want to watch, any of our live shots. Uh, we've got them all back up. We're going to let you choose your view. And we are just about 40 minutes away from total eclipse in our area. So get ready. Our coverage continues after this.
Welcome back to our live Eclipse Authority coverage. What you're looking at on the right hand side of your screen is a shot from Mazatlan, Mexico, where they are approaching totality, meaning the moon is beginning to almost completely obscure the sun. Amazing. And that's what these people at Aoi Elementary are waiting for. That's the other shot in your screen right there. Mia and Sarah were talking about all the adults standing outside the gate waiting to come in to join the kids for this massive experience. Well, all adults are in and look at the crowd out there waiting for this total eclipse to happen. Yes, we've got uh, our, our mascot. Mike is out there with his official Weather Authority eclipse glasses. We've got a bunch of excited parents who are going to be able to share this uh, potentially once in a lifetime opportunity to have a total eclipse with their child, which is awesome. And if you want to peek in on any of those live streams, all you have to do is go to that QR code and that'll take you right to one of them. Or you can stay right here with us because we're coming right back with more. A clip Incredible. Back to our coverage we love of the outfits. Eclipse Authority. Your own so Total so Eclipse. And if you don't have a t-shirt that says Eclipse on it, you ain't happy. Uh, we didn't dress appropriately no, because not. out there in Fredericksburg, hey. where Justin and Adam are, you got to have a good looking t-shirt. So let's listen into this interview. Switch plans on that Ever short ever. time frame. Mm -hmm. The longest ever to see the totality is 74 minutes. In 1973, scientists took a Concorde flew into the path of totality and followed it for 74 minutes. And it takes the Concorde to do that, because yeah, otherwise so you can't, yeah, yeah, you can't do it today. Yeah. Oh. And yeah. they retired the Concorde, yeah. so we would yeah. need a fighter jet or right, something exactly. yeah, to do that. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> That's incredible. Now, what's your, what, what's your advice to people during totality? You know, even if it's cloudy, like, what's your advice to just look up, look down, look, what, what do you, how do you help, help them prepare? I think you can't. I think once it goes totality, you just have this feeling and you just feel the darkness and you feel the nature come alive and, and you just, people cheer. You yeah. cheer, you just you know, they don't even take a time to look around. They just are yeah. staring at the sun, uh, at the to total sun, yeah. but take a look around and yes. look at the difference and the temperature, how it yeah. cools down. 
the street lights come on, the crickets might be chirping, the dogs might act a little bit different, a little bit stranger. Yep. And then you'll really get to understand the amazement. The feeling. Of, and the, fe the feeling of this. Yeah. You guys are giving me goosebumps, man. I know, right? That's like what these, I had yeah, last time. I had that. So right? I heard yeah. they canceled it today, and it's for tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Why couldn't this have been in July? It, it would have been yeah, yesterday. Or July would have been guaranteed. <laughs> Sunny day. All right, we're going to show you the map real quick. If you're at home or maybe in your office, you want to know where you are as far as the uh, path of totality. There it is. All you got to do is go to our website, click on that map, and it'll zero in right where your office is or your home is. So check that out, and we'll be right back. And welcome back to our continuing coverage of the Eclipse 2024. On your right is Mazatlan, Mexico, a little sliver left, almost total eclipse in Mexico. And on the left side of your screen, it may look like it's just dark, but that's actually our local camera in Fredericksburg looking at the sun. And you can see that we've begun to obscure the view of the sun. It is cloudy there. That is why the shot is so dark. But uh, you can see that when the clouds lift, you see that brightness come forward and you see the sun beginning to shine through. Very cool. Again, left side, Fredericksburg, right side, Mazatlan, Mexico. We'll be right back. And you watch the eclipse, but instead you learn the optimum.
And welcome back to our coverage of the Eclipse, your Eclipse Authority. And we're going to take you back up to Fredericksburg. Some interesting interviews going on. We have uh, folks from Brazil and Argentina here. As you know, people came from all over the world uh, booking flights just to be sitting right there where they are. And Justin Horn and Adam Kasky are out there. They're interviewing different people they see. Uh, they're also uh, keeping an eye on the animals, making sure they are safe in the eclipse. What do you think that dog's thinking right now? It, that he can't see very well yeah, because like he's got eclipse glasses on. <laughs> but uh, we showed you just a moment ago that the eclipse is happening in Fredericksburg. We have our own camera out there as well. And uh, you can see it's about a quarter over the sun at this point. Mazatlan, meanwhile, is yeah, here's my about, here's if you can. I don't know if you can swing the camera over. We can show you the Mazatlan camera. That's happening. That is happening right now. Yeah. So you can see this. This is all that's left. This is just a little sliver right there. So. It started here in South Texas. Mazatlan is about to be completely in the dark here, probably in the next five to 10 minutes. We're keeping an eye on the cloud cover. That is the issue for a lot of people. Um, it goes in and out in Fredericksburg, the, the clouds covering the eclipse. But over in Bernie, meantime, they have pretty much solid uh, cloud cover, but they do have a lot of Folks there and Steve Spreister and Jen Strusky are interviewing happy folks who are glad they are there. It's gonna, uh, it's gonna get like really dark. So that's what you're excited about? Yeah. Yeah. Have you guys ever experienced an eclipse before? Well, not a total eclipse. Okay. Perfect. But like kind of. So you came out here today. Who'd you come with? Um, um her her sister and my mom. And yeah. her mom and her little brother. What do you think your emotions are going to be when this happens, when everything goes dark? Have you thought about that? Like, um, amazed probably and like excited. Excited and like, amazed. You think you'll get emotional? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's hard to admit no. on live TV that you no. might get emotional. She says but, no. You know, okay. No, no emotion. It's hard to know, right, though, until it happens. Mm -hmm. And then maybe you'll feel something. You don't know. Maybe. <laughs> what do you think about being out here with all these people at the Dog and Pony Grill here? You've got huge telescope. You're, you're standing right in front of Telescope City. You've got all these people who are out here for the same exact thing. Have you thought about that? Uh, maybe a little. Like, what do you think? I think it's like really cool and like come and like how a lot of people want to like see it and like how like not a lot of people get to see it in their life. Mm -hmm. Are y'all into science? Is this intriguing you more to learn more about space and, and astronomy? Um, yeah. Uh, just a little. Yeah. <laughs> just a little. You don't you don't think you're going to become an astronomer after this? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Probably. Have, have they let you look through some of these telescopes <laughs> back there and things like that? Uh, no. Okay, I'll see if I can set that yeah, up for you. Sure we'll let see you. if we can make Just that happen. <laughs> it, 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 I, I, I am, I'm amazed, though, by the different telescopes that we have here and the different people and people selling things from Eclipse Burgers yes. to the T-shirts to cookies. Have you, have you had anything Eclipse-related yet? Uh, I had an Eclipse cookie. Was it good? Yeah. Did, Did Eclipse any other cookie you've ever had? <laughs> Uh, uh, sure. <laughs> Did you try anything? Um, I had like an eclipse float. Oh, that sounds good. Have you met anybody from other places? Like we talked to a family that's here from Georgia. We talked to, uh, we've seen other people that are mm -hmm. here from Florida, people from Kansas. Alabama. Have you talked to any of those people? Um, uh, not really, but I talked, but like, I talked to one person, but I don't know where they're from. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What'd you talk about? <laughs> Um, they just came up to me and asked if they want to play soccer. Oh, so you got to play a little go. soccer out here. Where did that? Oh, I was going to look for our official Eclipse dog, but I think he's probably oh, yeah, uh, he moved on at this point. Did you see the dog with the Eclipse glasses? All right, we're going to leave this live shot in Birdie with Steve Sreester and Jen because look what this. is happening right now in this Mexico. This is all that's left in Mazatlan, Mexico. I think we should just stand here for a second and, and oh, watch it overtake Look how quickly. The sun. And it is look at this. almost gone. In a moment, we're not going to see anything but black. And this is just a preview of what we're going to be seeing in San Antonio, or rather not seeing. The people in Mexico <laughs> right now are heading into complete darkness. Look how much is left. This is, this is absolutely amazing.
we can. Well, I don't, I don't know. We can just stick with this for a second. But this is what we're going to be seeing here in about the official total eclipse time in San Antonio was 133. So it varies around. Yeah, it's like 120 up in, in the northern part of the city and there. I don't Look even think that. you can see it on the screen anymore. Yeah. It's just the faintest it's right here. It's right here. little and tiny bit. It is gone. gone. <laughs> there you go. It's the magic. The sun is back there somewhere. But that's the moon coming around. That is just so. Let's moon. see. Uh, just for grins, since we're here, let's see how long it takes before we start to see the other side. This other side. Let's we see had we talked about how second. there would be a ring of fire yeah. in <laughs> some spaces where no, they have totality. In Mazatlan, it's complete totality. This is they amazing. can all look straight up at it right now and not hurt the retinas of their eyes as you should not be doing here in San Antonio, by the way, without your glasses on. Um, so it was right about here, so you figure It'll be coming loop, about, so it's around be right over about, here. Right about over there somewhere. So if we want to hold on to this for a second, let's see if we can see it just. Do we, want to go to, do we want to go to Sarah and uh, Mia real quickly at Owie Elementary and then pop back in when we uh, see Okay, there's Mazatlan. one in Junction. This is this is down oh, in Junction, yeah. so we, we popped that up for you. So that's almost half, isn't it? Yes. That's getting pretty close. So, but you can see all the. And that's about an hour west of Fredericksburg, um, about an hour and a half from uh, Bernie, Texas. So, this let's, is ha coming our way. Yeah. Uh, pretty soon. Let's get back to Mazatlan real quick and see if you can pop that one back up and let's see if it's uh, if it's passed it up. Can you can you do that? Uh, we can't okay. switch back and forth okay, right at the moment. All right, let's anyway, head over to, right to Mia and uh, and Sarah over at Owie Elementary School. Hey, guys. Hey, guys, we have a big party going on here at Owie. I don't know if you can see all 600 students out here uh, and their parents getting ready for totality. It's pretty cloudy here, but of course, uh, once totality happens, it's going to get dark and very cool outside. But we have got Ava and Olivia here. What grade are you guys in? Fifth. And here's the cool thing about Ava and Olivia. How long have you guys been best friends? Eight years. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? So you guys have been talking a little bit about what's happening today, the total eclipse. Y'all want to tell everybody what's happening in the sky? So, um, do you want to get to it? Or? Uh, you can. Okay. <laughs> so, um, the moon is basically moving, orbiting Earth, yeah. and then the Earth is orbiting the sun. And so that the moon is orbiting to where the sun and the moon finally meet, which makes a total eclipse. It sure does. So yeah, the moon's casting its shadow, it's right, moon, onto yeah. the Earth. And how cool is it that where we are, we're going to be in that shadow. Yeah. So do you all know what's going to happen whenever totality happens? It's going to get pretty dark, dark. right? Yes. Yeah, a little bit of a temperature drop, yeah. right? Did you hear anything about the animals, how the animals might behave? Oh. The animals are gonna know what's happening. Maybe yeah. not, but this is maybe an experiment we can do. Is like I think maybe the birds might start to act a little crazy. Is so that your official hypothesis? Me. That is my hypothesis <laughs> for the day. <laughs> well, we are so excited to be here with you guys. So thanks for having us. We're pretty pumped. You'll and you'll have your eclipse glasses, right? Oh yes, our and eclipse glasses. your authority glasses. And where are you going to school next year? Um, I'm going to Hobby, and yep. she's going to Fox. Oh, awesome. They're the top dogs of Owie right now. Way to go, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining us on KSAT. Reminder that we're streaming on KSAT right now. So many students have moved in. Let's go ahead and say hi, guys. Say hi, hi everybody. Say hi. They've got all their gear. Back to y'all in the studio. All right. Thank well, you so much, Sarah and Mia and your, your new best friends. We're uh, keeping an eye, uh, kind of master control here in the studio. This is uh, Junction, Texas. Uh, and what you're seeing, that's the sun, but those are clouds streaming across the view of the sun. It looks like the sun's on fire with smoke, but that's actually, those are clouds. And every once in a while, the, it goes yellow. It's a very spectacular picture. I'm going to guess and out of junction. say UTC. TC stands for total coverage, so 18 minutes away from total coverage. Does that sound about right? That could be right, but uh, that's what we're going to see here in a few minutes. And just, just out of uh, curiosity, if you were curious, Eagle Pass, it should be total, total time of coverage is at 127, Uvalde 129, and then here in San Antonio is 133. Obviously, Fredericksburg is going to be a little bit different, and so is yeah. Bernie because they're they're further northwest of San Antonio, and the and the line was kind of going northeast. So it's going the times will be a little bit different. But there you go. There gives you an idea of just how much.
We were watching Mazatlan just a few minutes ago yeah. and we watched it go into total darkness. The reason we can't switch back and forth is because this is a shot where you're getting from, I believe, ABC News One. Um, hopefully we can, when they switch it again, we'll be able to show you how it flips around and you begin to see the sun appearing on the right side of your screen as the moon moves further over. What's amazing to me is how excited these kids are and how many scientists have converged on San Antonio and South Texas. We saw earlier a shot where um, Justin and Adam are and all the telescopes and all yeah, the people that they're talking if, to. If we could come a, on over here, I don't know if we can move the camera, but we've got a lot of activity going on all over South Texas right now. Um, and it's and I'm wondering how many of these kids are going to be growing up now wanting to be scientists or astronomers or astronauts. How inspiring this event is for them. Great STEM projects here in San Antonio right there. They're, right they're, now. They're science, we're going to take a whole bit. We're going to take a little break and we're going to be right back. We're going to head up to the rooftop for our own view of the eclipse here in San Antonio. The eclipse and science itself are on a collision course to truly break open the secrets of the universe. Rapid advancement has brought us to a point where science The eclipse and science itself are on a collision course to truly break open the secrets of the universe. Rapid advancement has brought us to a point where sci-fi is becoming reality. For the very first time in a period in our in humanity, we are finally at a point where we can answer the question, are we alone in the universe? Amazingly, technology is reaching a place where we can answer the question once and for all. That technology is in the form of what's being called the Habitable Worlds Observatory, a future NASA project. It's a telescope like its predecessors, Hubble and James Webb, but with even more ability to look closer and even farther into the depths of our universe. We have eight, some people argue, nine planets in our solar system. And, and so is that unique? Is that you know, is that rare or is that common? How many? And so we want to go look at other solar systems and look at really hundreds of other planets and look at their chemical composition and truly try to look at the, I like to call it the zoology of 
planets. Crook will be in San Antonio for the eclipse, not only because it's science at work, but because it plays into her research. She's collaborating with Dr. Chris Packham, professor of physics and astronomy at UTSA. Because the moon goes in front of the sun as we see it, we can see the faint kind of something like the atmosphere of the sun. We, although it's there all the time, we can't see it because of the dazzling brightness of the sun. It's similar with these uh, uh, planets around these distant stars, right? The, we can't see those planets because the stars are very bright. So the Habitable Worlds Observatory will kind of make like a, an artificial eclipse. But the only way to do, do that is to do exactly what Chris just said. You've got a bright star that's 10 billion times brighter than the reflected light you're trying to see from the planet. And that you have to block out that starlight. Allowing them to see things like the atmospheres of planets outside of our solar system. It's fascinating science that they hope the eclipse will help with. But they also want to share their love of space with all the young, budding scientists who will be joining them to view the eclipse. We ask a question, we build a mission to go find that answer, and it gives us that answer, but it begs us to ask even more questions. Like Justin Horn, KSAT 12 News. We can hear you. What are we going to come out to? I can't. Are you talking on, on, on one? Are you talking on Anchor One? Because I could hear Justin in his package, but I cannot hear you. Okay. Welcome back to the KSAT studio rooftop terrace, as we're calling it, our eclipse viewing station here in downtown San Antonio. We've got our glasses on and we kind of don't need them because we are in total cloud cover right yeah, now, that's, David. That's too bad. Jason says that uh, our Josh, our photographer Josh says that the sun is like back over there somewhere. Okay. But that's the problem. It's back over there somewhere. And we're kind not exactly of, sure. Kind of exactly where the yeah. deepest cloud cover Josh is. is. Josh is showing it to you right Josh, now. Yeah. I need the glasses because the lights. 
The, yes. the studio lights are bright. So, it is getting know. darker out here in downtown San darker. Antonio. A few minutes ago, as we were headed out the door to the rooftop, we saw that shot from Mexico yeah. that just kind of blew our minds because it took about four minutes for the moon to move from completely over the sun to begin showing the other side of the sun. So there was just a little bitty sliver when we walked out. So that was that was pretty impressive. So that's what hopefully people in at least Fredericksburg are going to get to see because we know the sun is shining up there uh -huh. on and off. And we've seen that shot from Junction that has that was pretty good shot. We saw clouds going through, but we also saw a pretty good idea of what that eclipse is going to look like, at least in Junction. So hopefully some folks up in Bernie and around there will get a, get a chance. I can think back in the 1990s, early 1990s, I was working in Portland, Maine, and we had one of these eclipses in the afternoon. And even though we had cloud cover, much like this, it was pretty spectacular because it did become dusk in the middle of the day. And I, there was a awesome hush all over the city. Everyone went quiet. And a lot of people feel like it's a mystical moment, a transformative moment in their lives when they have seen that. And we've seen our camera, we have a camera in Fredericksburg that's pointed to the sun. And we've seen the moon moving in front of the sun up there in Fredericksburg. I don't know if we can show you that shot right now, but when we come back after this break, hopefully we can show you that shot again because it, it probably is about half to three quarters coverage right now. Right now, we're about 10 minutes away from totality so stand by. We'll be right back. Welcome back to our coverage of Eclipse 2024. I'm still waiting. Okay, you look a little bit like Devo, but I'm still waiting. You're, at least you're safe. Uh, <laughs> those of you in downtown San Antonio, and you can see how much cloud cover we have. We even felt a raindrop just a moment ago. We don't really need our glasses right now because we are safe. It is 126. Uh, we are going to be getting uh, behind those clouds more of an eclipse at this moment than they are in Fredericksburg, but it follows a long line 
of eclipses in the United States that have been remarkable for one reason or another. This one, uh, I don't think we're going to see another one for another how many years? Uh, not in my lifetime. I just know that. So, you know, yeah. whatever that is. Oh, so, okay. A, a, few a, a few decades. Let's just put it do that way. Do you have some history? Because I got some history. I do. I do. The first uh, list of to so total solar eclipses ever recorded in the United States uh, dates back to the 18th century, 1778. And that's according to NASA. And then they've had them in 1806, 1869, 1878, all the way through 1973. There was one that came through Fort Worth back in the late 1800s. But one of the first ever recorded eclipses was 3300 B.C. in Ireland. Scientists, archaeologists, whatever they call them, figured out from hieroglyphics and writing on cave walls and all that. And the other one was over in China at about wow. the same time. And they, they saw these pictures drawn. And they, the, some, I guess some of the people who were, were fearful of this thing thought it was celestial dragons yeah. eating the sun. There's a so, lot of mystical yeah, stories that stuff. go along with eclipses, depending on what cultural background you or your family may have. Uh, in some parts of Central America, uh, if you are pregnant, you are being advised to wear something red to ward off birth really? defects or, wow. or birthmarks. Another one is that uh, it is a sign that the sun and the moon are um, getting romantic and it's a time for love, <laughs> loving your fellow man. Oh, I like that yeah, one. That was pretty good. Yeah. That's, 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 <laughs> That's hard. But there's so many different, some, in, in some tribes in the United States, this is a sign of doom and death in other tribes uh, in their history. It is a sign for you not to look up, but to look down at the ground. Um, they say that is the safest, best luck thing to do. So maybe back then they knew there was a little damage to your eyes if you looked up. Being up on the roof, we can't see, but hopefully we can see the shot from um, Junction. Yes. And maybe the sun and the moon have gotten together in Junction. I don't know. It might be. might be a romantic right. moment in Junction for the I, sun and the moon. Can and we, we will bring it to you live. <laughs> yeah, we'll have that for you. Meantime, let's well, head go. over to Bernie and Steve Sreester and Jen Strusky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. <laughs> You're like telling them what yes. to say. Yes. Yes. We had a pre-interview. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, yes. This is fun. This is in the cloud. Yes. If you look, the they're changing color. Changing color. Yes. A little bit. They are. I think it's getting darker. You said you were going to be scared once it got dark. Is that what I heard you say? I mean, it hurts beating kind of fast right now. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That's what you're feeling. Yeah. We ask about the emotions, right? Because you feel different things, but the darkness is kind of giving you I a mean, little scare. Her daughter was asking me if the world was going to end. Oh. Yes. My daughter was like, I mean, it wasn't like a happy yes. thought, but I mean, I was like, well, if it ends, I'm with the people oh. I love. Yeah. <laughs> And it'll be okay. We're trying but to tell them the science behind it. We're like, obvious. nothing is going to happen. Right. It's all science, <laughs> yes. And it happens, yes. There's too many theories out there, There right? are way too many theories out there, yes. Right. We'll count them. Give us your names. I'm Katie. Katie. And I'm Robin. Katie and Robin from New Braunfels. From New Braunfels. Okay. Yes. Do you, I mean, I, there's actually some shadows maybe that could okay. happen? Yes. I mean, I, I... Shadows? Yeah. With the lack of... Said With the, so there's still going to be... Right. There could be some right. shadows. Okay. I mean, but I think it's going to happen. Like it's like uh, 7 o'clock or something. No. 8 o'clock already. Maybe I think it's going to... I think it's going to sleep early tonight. We yes. have two minutes. Yes. Okay. I mean, I'll take a shadow. That's fine. But I think it's just very important that we're all experiencing this together. You know? And it's just kind of a communal thing that is so rare. Once in a lifetime. More or less for this area. And I, I am a Texas girl, so I'm going to tell you, for this to be happening in Central Texas, I consider it a blessing yes, to be able to be a part of it. Yes. yes. Well, yeah. And it's also, everybody's in a good mood. You think people might be bummed out because of the clouds, and I think there's a little bit of that, but people are in a good mood. Yes. It's not hot. It's, it's yeah, no, it feels great outside, yes. <laughs> that's, that's the positive thing, is the weather feels great now, yes, yes, I will say. Yeah. And, and it is getting darker. Wow. You feel this? Okay. Feel it. All right. It's happening right now. <laughs> All right. Are you feeling Let's this? Let's go right, back to your daughters. Guys. Have fun. Thank, thank you. you. Don't, be, don't be scared, okay? <laughs> yeah, don't be scared. That's the biggest thing. I mean, look at the mood, Steve. Everybody's happy, taking it in. Absolutely. And that's the thing. Like, people are standing, and you might think people would be. One minute away, okay? Boom. <laughs> right. Okay. You might think people would be bummed out because of the clouds, but they're not. I mean, this is an exciting time. I'm this excited, is an exciting Steve. thing to happen. <laughs> All right. So, is this a mother? Is this a mother daughter here? Is that who we're talking about? Okay, come here, both of you. Come here, mom. No, come here, mom. Oh, it's happening. 
Hi there, guys. Welcome back to our coverage. As you can see, it has gotten a lot darker here in San Antonio. We're a couple of minutes away from totality here. Um, Josh, if you could swing the camera around, you can see that the nighttime look of the city of San Antonio is now underway. The lights are turning on. They're on some sort of a photosensitive uh, kicker switch, I'm sure. Uh, you can see a lot of nighttime uh, uh, floors in buildings that are getting all lit up. Here, we've got our own camera lights hooked up because if you we didn't, we would be standing in the dark. It, it is like night out it here is. right now. And I can tell you, we are not, where we are standing right now, we are not in the path of totality. The path of totality for us is about a mile to two miles west of us. So that's gonna be where the totality is and they're going to get it right right there on the edge gets it for about 30 seconds yeah. but we don't get the, we're not even in the path of totality but it is it's it's nighttime it, okay we're going to be turned dark. we're going to take it over to Fredericksburg right now where the party and totality has begun nature for giving us just like a split I appreciate second that. of time I to do. actually see it. <laughs> it's one like more. you got one more in you, Mother Nature. Yeah. Yeah, come on, you can do it I one more mean, time. That made me tear up. Seriously. Wow. We have two more minutes. It could happen. Okay. And two minutes is a long time, right? And TV time too. It's got the jazz going over there. Yeah. <laughs> that little glimpse though, wow. We'll take another. Come on, give us another glimpse. How much time we have left, Diana? We have one minute. One minute. Okay. One minute Let's see what happens. Oh, wow. wow. I just wonder how my dogs are doing at home. <laughs> Confused. <laughs> Yeah. No. Yes. Uh, I'm sure mine. Uh, the confusion. <laughs> I'm just looking up, hoping. What's that little oh. red dot off to the side? I think it's like. It's funny because you don't even have to look up. Like the crowd just tells you that we're seeing something. Yeah, they'll and let you're us like, know. Oh, okay. They'll let us know for sure. That's my indicator the entire day. Yeah. I feel like it's up. Oh, it's passing. <laughs> <laughs> so it's 1.35 in the afternoon and it feels like, like it's eight, midnight. Yeah, yeah. It's just, We're coming out of totality now. Okay. Okay. We should be coming out of totality. Okay. you can get, right? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I 
not looking at that dog. He just looked confused. Like, yeah. what just happened? <laughs> Doug's like, what time is it? Yeah. What time is it? What is happening? He's, he looks so confused. What, what's going on, Brad? I know. Yeah, the next trick. Yeah. Yeah. That was awesome. <laughs> we got a tiny glimpse. Yeah, that was. I'll take it. I'll take it. More I'll take it. Than, uh, right? And it made me tear up, honestly. I was like, wow. It's just beautiful. All right, so we are coming out softy. of totality right now, as you can tell, because you can see me. And. I just, it, it, I am, I know we caught just a brief glimpse of it, yeah. but it was awesome. It was. I teared up. I didn't know how I was going to feel, but it's just the, the beauty of Mother Nature. <laughs> I don't know. It got me. It got me, and everybody felt it here. They let us know, like you said, Steve. They were screaming, and we just caught at least 10 seconds. Yes, absolutely. Huh? Yeah, I know. Is it Tuesday? <laughs> is it Tuesday? What just happened? <laughs> Is that what it is? Is it Tuesday? That's what it feels like. Hey, buddy. Hi. I'm Steve. What's your name? My name is Benjamin. Benjamin, what'd you think about what just happened? I was like, uh, what is happening? <laughs> what do you think now? That the sun, does it feel like it's a new day? Yeah, I, I'm like, why is it so... Well, what, like, when it was dark, I was like, why is it so dark? <laughs> you have a story to tell when you go back to school, right? Yes. It's about the, the eclipse. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you, when you're giving a report at school, what are you going to say? Like, describe it to me. I'm going to say, there was a, there, I saw a, a full, I saw a full eclipse. I, and yes. what happened? And it went, but when I saw the full eclipse, it went, the sky went all dark. So I had to find the full eclipse. Yeah, I love it. How old are you, Ben? Four. Four. Benjamin, <laughs> sorry. Benjamin, <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> what do you think as you're standing here? I, I'm assuming this is your son. No. Okay. He's my godson. Okay, your oh, godson. Yes. What do you think as you're standing here? Oh, that's a, how precious is that? It got dark all of a sudden. Um, we are continuing to watch. Almost everybody is back in the light again. We've got a drone shot there over on the right-hand side of your screen. Just really three minutes ago it was a nighttime shot it looked like a nighttime highway shot mm. and look at it now yeah when we were up on the on the roof just coming down you could see the highway highway uh 37 and 35 and it was like i'm going home now my day is over yes the sun has set home. i'm headed to the house all the lights run on all the cars hopefully nobody got crazy out there on the driveway you can see the rocket lock and tear still a little dark there but everybody else is, is pretty bright so and that's our drone shot over fredericksburg and it went dark and then it went light so it uh absolutely incredible hope that you got something out of this hope you were able to see it on all those shots that we that we brought to you and yeah, uh, we're going to be rewinding we've been recording yeah. a lot of things from all sorts of different areas of san antonio we're going to bring that to you uh throughout the day and on our website ksat.com so you need to watch the five and the six because we had cameras rolling all over the place and the view was amazing even if it was only for three minutes or four minutes. That is a moment in life that you will never forget. Talk about Mother Nature. Talk mm. about God's creation. There it was right there for you. All right. Laid gonna, it all out. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back.
And welcome back. What amazing moment to be alive to see this solar eclipse, a total solar eclipse in several different places. So right now, all our crews are talking to people and getting their reactions. Yes, and we're going to be checking in uh, on all of them uh, throughout the afternoon. Uh, meantime, let's head over to Mike Osterhage and Fiona. They've been talking to folks over at The Rock, um, the Spurs facility, where there's a lot of science going on. That was the, the one little thing to get the spark going. And as all the scientists that we've been talking to, you know, seeing yeah. the expressions on the kids' faces and, and the questions they ask and the, and, and the enthusiasm. And, the sci and, you know, all of them talking about how, what it was when they were a kid that sparked this interest and how that's what they wanted this event to be if that hadn't been done already, right? Mm -hmm. They wanted this event to be that spark for the next generation of, uh, you know, astrophysicists and, of course, even uh, graphic designers, right. because all that is needed to be a part of the space program. And when you think about all the different private organizations, mm -hmm. not only down at Boca Chica down here, but, you know, the different ones that are launching rockets, it's not just yeah. the Apollo program yeah. like when I grew up. Um, and so there are going to be many more opportunities for that. And as they perfect things, you know, like anything else, it's just going to grow. You know, yeah. cell phones started, they were very small business. And now, yeah, you know, like that, it, it grows Everyone's carrying so much. a computer, right? I mean, wrapped around their wrist as well. Yeah. You know, and it was neat to watch the kids sitting just right behind us on Okay, that's Mike and Fiona wrapping things up over at the Rocket La Quintera. We're still going to get a lot of reaction from some of the folks who witnessed the eclipse, and we'll have that for you when we come back.
Welcome back to our coverage of the eclipse that's just wrapping up. Let's take a look at the roads right now. I 10 at Comfort. You can see there is a lot of traffic coming out of the uh, Comfort area right now. We are uh, actually expecting the roads to get pretty thick with folks uh, now that the event is over with. So we need you to be careful out there. We haven't had any reports here in the studio of issues involving the traffic, which was a big concern for TransGuide and TxDOT earlier today and really throughout the weekend. Of course, that's comfort, so that's way out west. And we know that uh, a lot of folks were having a problem getting west on I-10 earlier before the eclipse happened out there. At Bernie Stage Road seemed to be kind of crowded, so hopefully people are staggering their departure a little bit from wherever they watch the eclipse and yeah, the traffic will keep flowing just like this. So I we know we got uh, crews everywhere still interviewing folks, still getting some emotional reaction from them. We're gonna go to one of these? We, we, uh, right we also yeah. want to let you know that uh, Highway 46 in particular is it's only a two lane road in most places and that one is going to be a trouble spot because that is the the exit uh, out of the Fredericksburg Comfort Bernie area as well. So we'll keep an eye on that and uh, and uh, on KSAT Connect we're looking for your pictures. Don't forget to show them to us of uh, how you spent your day uh, with the eclipse. And we'll be right back.
Hey, real quick before we go, we want to tell you that there was the possibility of some severe weather later on this afternoon. And so I know our weather team is headed back to the station after watching the eclipse, and they'll keep you up to date on that. But in the meantime, all you got to do is go to our weather app, and you can check out the radar. We see some thunderstorms to the northwest or northeast of San Antonio, and it looks like there's a few south headed this way. So once again, some severe weather possibly in the forecast for later on this afternoon. The weather app will have it for you until our crew gets back. And we do want to see your pictures. Again, scan the QR code, send them to us via KSAT Connect, and we may show some of them on the air in the days to come. It was the day that the sun went dark, and it was very exciting here, and I'm so happy to have been able to witness it with you. Hopefully you enjoyed all our coverage from all over South Texas and you were able, you were able to enjoy the, uh, the eclipse as, as, self, as, as well. And we appreciate you being with us all afternoon. And we're going to continue with some coverage northeast of San Antonio and Texas ABC. Right now.